All right, guys, this is part four, and today we're going to look at text input and WPF uh, applications, desktop applications. So um, in the last video, we talked about grids and how we can kind of determine where pieces of our user interface are going. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything in this grid because um, I don't think it's needed anymore. Let's go ahead and delete. Actually, let's delete the whole grid itself. So I'm going to minimize this right here and uh, just delete the whole thing. Instead, I'm just going to put a stack panel. And then inside that, we're going to have another stack panel. Okay. Um, and in this stack panel, I'm not sure where this is going to go. It's probably just going to go in the top left. Uh, wherever I put something. So let's go ahead and see where it's going to place it. I'm going to put a label um, and content is going to be here. Yeah, so it's going right here. Let me make this a little larger for you guys so you can see. I keep forgetting that it's probably harder for you to see than it is for me. So um, this is where our stuff's going to go. So I'm going to have a label and it's not going to have any content, it's just going to have a name so we can reference it in the um, C sharp. And let's just call it uh, name label. So pretty much what I want to do is I want to ask for a user's name and then they click a button after typing it in and it displays right here. That's all we're really going to look at in this video is text input. Uh, so there are actually two um, different text elements in, in XAML and one is the text block okay and pretty much all that is is it's the equivalent of like a paragraph in HTML so we can have text and this is my text just like that um, and you can see the difference between it and label and this uh, this is the label Labels are a little bit bigger and you can make them bold if you would like. So you can do font weight, just like in CSS, and we can make it bold. And you can do the same actually with text blocks as well. There's a bunch of different things. So if I just hit space, it shows you all of the different things uh, that we can do. We can do um, font size, we can do uh, margin in that container, in the, in the text block container. Um, and whatever else we want to mess around with. But this is the label and this is the text block. And there's also another text element that accepts text. So that's called the text box. And actually, instead of having an opening and closing tag, I'm just going to put it all in one, just like that. Let's go ahead and give it a name. Um, its name is going to be main text block because, or text box, I'm sorry, because I am, uh, not very creative this morning, though it's, I guess it's in the afternoon now. Wow, it's 12 and 9. Um, so we have a name, and let's go ahead and give it a width of 200 pixels. So it's all the way over here, it's in the center, and let's go ahead and put the horizontal alignment um, to the left. So now it's right here. And you can go ahead and change the height if you want and whatever, uh, but this text box is what the user is going to input in. It's the equivalent of an HTML input. I, I don't know if it'll let me type it in here. Input. What the heck is going on? I don't know. Anyway, it'd be like input and then type is equal to text. All right, and that would be in quotes. It'd be like that. So we have our text box and now we just need a button to press so we know okay when the user is done finished or is finished typing in this text box and presses this button we can go ahead and run some code in the background so let's go ahead and add a button um, let's give it a name let's give it a name input button cool oh It'd help if I uh, if I did this correctly. It's name input <laughs> button. There we go. Beautiful. And if I hit save that extension I have, um, 
it go ahead and formats this for us. So let's go ahead and add something to the button. Um, add name. Cool. And let's make the width a little bit smaller. We don't want it to take up the whole uh, the whole um, screen and width. And let's go ahead and horizontally align it left. We could use a grid if we wanted to, but that would take a little bit longer for me to create this video. And really, just to show you this, it's unnecessary. That's just more of style. Um, the outcome isn't going to be any different. So let's go ahead and actually in this button, let's go ahead and add a margin, which pretty much says, uh, let's do it 10 pixels. I'm going to place myself 10 pixels away from everything else. So it's 10 pixels to the left here from the next element, which is just the end. Uh, it's 10 pixels away from the top, uh, whatever is above it. Um, it could be it could be the very first element, and it could be 10 pixels down, or it could be whatever element is right above it. Um, there's nothing to the right, so there's nothing really to compare it to, but it's 10 pixels away from anything if we were to place something right here in like a uh, horizontal oriented stack panel. And it, see how it has a line right here. This is 10 pixels away from the next element if we were to place something. We could do the same with this if we wanted. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. Margin, let's just do 10 as well. So it gives it a little bit of space from the label and text and everything isn't so cluttered. Okay, cool. Go ahead and save. Um, so we have our button, we have our text blocks, or text box, we have our text block, and we have our label. Let's go ahead and delete this text block. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I was just showing you that that is a thing aside from a label. And the label is actually what we're going to change. So I'm going to make the content nothing. It's just going to be empty. And let's go ahead and the code behind, um, oh, actually, let's add an event for this button. So name input button click. Let's go ahead and look for that. And now this whole event is done because we deleted it from our grid. Same with this. We deleted that button. So we can go ahead and delete those events from the previous videos. And this is name input button click event that we just created. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and create a variable, kind of like we did up here, uh, private string and name. So now we have a name variable, and whenever they click, let's go ahead and set this actually equal to an empty string. And whenever they click, let's go ahead and make that name variable equal to uh, what did we name our text box again? Main text box. So it's going to be main text box dot. Is it content or text? No, it's text. Okay. So now we're setting name equal to whatever the user types into that text box uh, as soon as they hit the button. And then what we can do is we can change our label, which is named main name label name label.content is going to be equal to, and I'm going to show you something new. I don't think I've shown this yet. Uh, if we put a dollar sign in front of a string, we can do some like interpolation, I think that's what it's called. I don't know if that's the exact term for what's going on here, but let me show you what this really does. Um, hi, whoops, let's go ahead and, what is going on with my cursor? There we go. Um, hello, and then we're going to place whatever the name variable holds. So what the dollar sign allows us to do is we can have these curly braces and we can put that inside of the string and anything we put in these curly braces can be referenced uh, in the code behind. So if we did name, or can reference things in the code behind. So if we did name, um, we can put it right there instead of doing something like, let me just cut this, uh, this would be plus and then geez, plus and then name, right? We could do that, but to make it a little bit easier, maybe a little easier to understand, we can just put the value of name right here. And it's already a string, but if we wanted to just verify, we could do to string. So now after we hit the button, it's going to save 
the value in the text box um, and we're going to save that into the variable name and then we're going to change the content of the label to say hello and then whatever they just entered okay so let's go ahead and start this and make sure it works okay I don't know if I can make no I can't make the same bigger let's say my name is John and I hit add name and it says hello John so that is how you can get some user input let's go ahead and change that to Brandon and name hello Brandon um, let's do Greg hello Greg okay great so that is how you can get some user input via text from a text box in WPF. So that's another way to get some input other than the button that we've seen. All right. So pretty neat. All right, guys. Um, that's going to end this video. Hope you guys liked it. I uh, hope you learned something. If you're new to WPF, you definitely probably learned something, I would hope. Um, and if not, you probably already have seen this before, but maybe you needed a refresher, so this could benefit. In the next video, we'll do binding and uh, how you can go ahead and set the value of whatever they type in here into the label without having to uh, click the button. It just automatically does it. So that'll be in the next video, and um, I'll see you guys in hopefully that video. Take care.